comedy's difficult, and actually to sustain it for a whole hour is really difficult, and yet you succeeded. And I guess that's, I mean, that's obviously down to all three of you, but how much of a collaboration is it? Because I know obviously you're writing, but um, <clears throat> are they working with you at the start, or how, how does it all work in terms of what, what makes the final cut, so to speak? Well, I sort of write, sort of write it and then send it to them, and they, they uh, have a good filter <coughs> what's too long or what's... You know all that kind of stuff, and we we film a lot of it. And then Chris Bird is the editor who's here, who's fantastic. We often overfilm lots of stuff, and then we kind of make the and you sort of pare it down in the end. And I think that um, we we after doing the first one, we knew what worked the first time round, and we wanted to bring a lot more of the characters in, more of a sitcom element. And I think that that's that was that was fun about it, and also all the extra layers you have. So there's lots of visual jokes. People laughed at that, the sky planner that Gary had. He, the, fact he's, the fact he doesn't mind, the fact he said Penetration X and the Kemps. The idea, <laughs> he's watching his own film <laughs> and some weird sort of rude... <laughs> I think it's because they are so <coughs> keen, to, to, so happy to f make a fool of themselves. We are very, very lucky. I think after the first one, we, we sort of <coughs> began to know how we are portrayed, who we really are in this world. And um, we, we were talking then even about ideas for this one. Yeah. So now on this, we're filming this one, we're thinking about the next one. But so, so I suppose we, we came into this show a bit more aware of, of um, who this Gary Kemp is or that Martin Kemp is. And, mm. You know, I'm the pretentious twat, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so obviously you're- Little bits of truth are in there. <laughs> I mean, you're, you're playing these kind of, these, these heightened kind of fictional versions of yourself. And there may be a little bit of truth, who knows? I guess I know you can answer that bit. But in terms of that balance between kind of play, you know, because I guess the whole, the whole point of this is that if you start playing it for laughs, then the audience are probably not going to respond because you take it so seriously. And because you are, you know, I mean, you're prepared to take a, a pop at yourselves not in those characters. That, that I guess, is why it works. Yeah, but that's all the same with all uh, great comedy is that it's based in reality. And then it, the, the comedy comes out of that. If you heighten it too much, and you don't believe that you're based in reality, even though it is heightened, then it will not work. I think in a way there's a classic relationship in that, you know, I'm the sort of straight guy in it, really. And uh, I thought I was a straight guy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the one who's always exasperated yeah. at what's going on, you know. I, much, want, I want a better life, but I'm dragged back into that all the time. And how much does that reflect real life for you? <clears throat> totally. That's me. <laughs> I'm permanently exasperated, aren't I, darling? <laughs> <laughs> and um, and, and Reese, I guess, you know, sort of, obviously you had that experience with the All True, um, which is much more like a kind of traditional mockumentary in terms of lots of talk, talking heads. Yeah. yeah. And you've taken, I mean, you touched on sort of making it more like a sitcom, but actually, you know, you've taken, you've got like a heist element there. You've got all that kind of tension at the end. Well, I mean, it, it, it obviously has developed something much more. I wonder just in terms of, Moving on from that first thing in 2020, what you kind of learned from that and what you then wanted to bring into this? Well, having an hour is a lot to fill, and, and also it worked as an hour, and we have, you have to make sure people aren't bored. So you have to keep moving it all, then you set enough plot stuff going in throughout, so it all pays off at the end. People don't really remember the last 10 minutes on most things, so I, and I think I'm quite proud of the last 10 minutes, how it all builds up to a big ending. Mm, yeah. You don't think it would ha will have all that. And, and also bringing other characters in, so like Michael Kitchen playing the manager, and, and Danny John Jules being in there, all those characters coming in, and Perry. Um, you, you, you feel that you, it works better having them in a situation with other characters because then they look even more stupid, the two of them, rather than just paying off each other. And then and you've great got, actors as and well. And great actors. I mean, I can't believe they did it. Fantastic people. <laughs> yeah, having it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, the other really incredible thing about this, and we'll talk about sort of some of the casting and the cameos, which are also incredible themselves, but I mean, you didn't have very long to make this. I mean, you made it an incredible, almost like guerrilla style. It was made in eight days for, for, for about, can I say the budget? No, probably not allowed to say, but it's, it's a lot less than most programs. Eight it was very, very eight days. We made it in eight days, and that was in our house. Lucy and I was in it. That was our house. We were having to do help with the food. We did it all. All the crew were here. We all. It was like making a home video, but it was really fun because we. And it was just. It was a nice fun house. thing to make. Yeah. Huh? Nice house. Yeah, it's all right. It's been done up. It's all um, right. <laughs> <laughs> but it was to save. We tried to save money by making that. It was the only way to make it by having a. You know, you have to think practically. How can you film all this in one go? And um, and I think as a result of it, I think we we. I think we get on well and we enjoy ourselves. And it was fun. It was tiring for them because there's a lot of lines to learn. But we always made sure we had fun at the end. You know, we didn't. Yeah, we had fun with it. Fun. But, but there's a guiding that. rule when you make anything, you know, and it always goes back to the script. If you start off with a script that's no good, the, the, the product isn't going to work yep. in the end. Uh, Reese sends over the scripts. I spend about two hours reading it, <laughs> crying with laughter. <laughs> 
crying, literally. He sent over a couple of new ideas this week of crying for hours, which is so funny. Uh, and so if you have uh, something like that to work from, mm. then um, you know, you're going to make something funny. And I know that you're both no strangers to having a script in front of you. You both acted a lot over many years. Linda um, LaPlante. Linda LaPlante. <laughs> 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 um, how did you approach this, bearing in mind that you're kind of you're playing these kind of fictionalized versions of yourself? I mean, that, that I think he knows. <clears throat> he's we've spent a lot of time in Greece now, and he knows who we are, and he knows our characters. He knows our our um, you know the things that we're not you know that we try and hide from the general public mostly. Yeah. He's he knows that, and he pumps them up and he brings them out. And so when mm. he writes now, he's writing with our voices mm. in his head, I think. And um, and you know on the day we throw in different little things that, that, that we offer up things to each other, don't we? I well, mean, he, he, the, one of the funny lines is the, one of the, it's diarrhea, which was your idea. <laughs> diarrhea was your, we were thinking like, what other, yeah. how can we match things up and you can't with yeah, diarrhea? <laughs> and I guess when, you, when you're doing an eight days, you haven't got a lot of time to improvise, but it well, sounds well, no, like there do, is some coming through. Yeah, I mean, through. a lot of the stuff that backwards Britain, they were making stuff, up. There's, you do, there is room for it and you have to make sure you, you do. I, I mean, a lot of the stuff that works well is when, so in the first one, there's an argument with Shirley and, and, uh, and Martin, which was improvised. And in that last one, there was a lot of improv you, you basically it's quite loose. You can there's room to improvise and carry on. A lot of the police scenes were improvised. The the, the, the car we had, we couldn't get an actual police car, so we had a car that was the someone someone on the crew's car, and it had a baby seat in it. And I'm going, let's get the seat out. They went, oh, there's a baby seat in it. And then the lion came up, which is the criminals getting younger, which Ed Keir added in, and uh, and he also added a line about uh, um, you only you only cuff the the uh, white ones. I mean, again, a lot of the a lot of the uh, a lot of the cast came up with ideas. That was, I mean, that's what's yeah, nice but, about but it. Yeah. Let me tell you something. Where there's a lot of directors that you've worked with, that I've worked with, that will not bend like that. Yeah. They have a picture in their head and they know every word and how they're going to shoot every word. Uh, Reese, if if an idea comes up and it's funny, then he will squeeze it in. Also, we did. We weren't sure who was going to play the other musician. Oh, we? that's funny. Yeah, that went on for quite a long time. You know, we, we were trying to get a hold of different people. We had different ideas. You know, um, at one time we were going to be called Spandau Astley. But, <laughs> uh, but, but, but Rick was busy. But, but here's a funny thing about that. Here's a, fun, here's a funny story. So we, we asked Francis Rossi. We didn't hear back from him for a while. So we thought, oh, are we going to get instead? It was getting close to filming, just like the real thing. So we said, what about, what about Rick Astley, right? And so we contacted Rick Astley. And then basically, we didn't hear anything for ages. And he sort of, sort of slightly turned it down. And then luckily, Francis Rossi, who was offered in the first place, came back and said, I'll do it. The irony is that Rick Astley is doing it for real on New yeah, Year's yeah. Eve on BBC <laughs> One. <laughs> So he re and I thought is this a joke? Yeah, so he's yeah, actually yeah. rocking in Big Ben for real, Rick Astley. <laughs> it's not Tony Hadley. Yeah. <laughs> but um, but I thought I thought I think. <laughs> Sorry, some things just come out. Um, but I I thought that um, I thought Francis was brilliant. He's Absolutely very good. Brilliant. Yeah, I mean, amazing. I'm not having any of your ballady bollocks. No. <laughs> I mean, he's made 120 million albums. Ah. <laughs> I think that was on the day as Which well. That was, really was added good. in. Yeah. That was added in on the day. The line about you haven't made that many, have you? That was added. A lot of those things were added on the day. I mean, you those, made that those many. Yeah, you know, you've got obviously like Dexter Fletcher and you've got you know Adil Ray and. Well, Dexter, and talk, we you know, go back a long way actually because Dexter and, and you had Martin, a show, we were all yeah. had a shirt together as kids. Yeah, so uh, that was really a nice addition. We were really comfortable, and obviously Martin had. Had, had, had worked with um, uh, Tamsin, so um, ta Tamsin, yes, sorry, because yeah. he says yeah, it yeah, Tasmin, yeah. there, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, so, yeah, it was great extra people coming in all the time, making us feel comfortable. And Adil added that line as well, which was. Is that all here? He's here, and he had the line about, um, about taxi drivers and uh, doctors. That was yeah. his line again. See, we allow. I should have given him credit, shouldn't I? I mean, we've, we've, there's quite a few people here. Here was adults over there now on the aisle towards the back. We've got Perry down the front here. Over, you know, um, hey. I mean, per Perry did a right, bruv. Perry did a great job. I mean, bringing bringing him back again was um, was a sort of you know a, a, a moment of genius and bringing him in. But I, I we're mean, stuck with him, I'm afraid. He's, he's there for good now. But um, have you ever had any kind of response from the real Ross Kemp? Has he said anything about it? He did a thing on the one show when you were on it once promoting this. And he did a little video, but he won't do it for he won't do it for real though. So. <laughs> uh, we asked him. Uh, we're, we're doing it next week, and it's going to be renamed the One Show. Yeah. <laughs> one Show. Very good. Um, and uh, was there anything that was completely off limits, as far as and was there anything that you know 
I mean, obviously, you, you, you've had sort of references to Tony Hadley and there, and you've had references to lots of sort of celebrity culture stuff, but was there anything you just felt was going to be just sort of, be, you know, beyond the pale? Oh, I don't think so. I think well, the, if you look at the show, it's me and Gary rip each other apart, so there's nothing left. Mm. Uh, we're just skin and bones. I think, uh, we, we and I think if you do that, then you're allowed to uh, reach out and take the mickey out of other people. I don't think we tear pe other people. No, but, uh, no, 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 I don't think no. you do either. And, and in fact, actually, to be honest, I think um, the way that you acknowledge and deal with the whole kind of Tony Hadley thing actually is really well done because the joke is all on you, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, it's um, all on us. You know. So so I think you know, if he was to see it, he, he couldn't go away and feel anything oh. but I can, you know, relatively positive about it. Right. No, we're also about a reunion. You never know. <laughs> but also, we, I mean, we don't tie. His lawyers don't, might watch it, but I don't think he would. We don't really. I think it's a warm. It's a warm-hearted sort of comedy yeah. program. I mean, I, I feel a little bit sorry for the TikTok twat. Um, but we, we we were only joking about him as well, because again. The, the, the Sam Ryder line, that's just the, the manager who he's based on is just the sort of person who says that the joke is on the person, not the, the, the subject, the target. I, think, I mean, I, mean, I should also say, you know, we've been doing a call out. You've got Michael Kitchen in it, mm. who I think is. It's, it's, it's Round of applause. <laughs> um, and he's, I think he's one of those actors who, you know, sort of chooses their roles very carefully, should we say. And, and you know, you, you won him over for this one. Which, yes, um, I guess we, that, that's a scripting it's again. It's Reese's it? universe, though, isn't it? Rock universe, because yeah. he belongs mm. in your rock universe, he, as did Ch uh, C the Christopher. Chris Harrison. They came yeah. from Brian Pern. We brought them over into this world, sort of thing. Okay. So those who like Brian Pern, the, the sort of twelve of them, will be able to. No, they they, they know who they are. Yeah. <laughs> they can see the, the little crossovers. And in, in your eight days, sort of from a location point of view, were you literally moving day to day, or were you, was the majority of it filmed in one particular kind of area, so to speak? So we, we did like two days in in Norfolk in our house, and then we moved down to we did the uh, we to, the festival hall was in the, was in um, mm. where was that? That was in Croydon. Croydon. It looked very much like the real thing. So we we, we were around, but it was it was uh, yeah very fast. But I don't think it, I don't think filming something quickly has any effect on the the, the product at the end. The, the, the best the best location was was where we steal the tapes because that is yeah. that's a real location where they keep film uh, archive. You guys probably know about it, you know. I, I'm, and you walk around, you see the original foot film footage for Thirty Nine Steps yeah, or yeah. Yeah. great, you know, movies by yeah. Paul and Pressburger. Yeah, it's all there. Amazing. Yeah, we stole loads of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, and the true good. tapes, of course. And the true tapes, indeed. <laughs> yeah. um, and I mean, you, you just referred to then Mark. And you said something that that, that recently your script over that made you laugh uh, recently. So does that mean that you know that that it could there could be a continuation of this? You know, in, at some stage we i think we'd always like to do more because it's yeah. i feel like you know this is just a little it doesn't cost a lot of money to make Look and and it, and, and if it does if it does if it does well if it does well it's fine but i think you know we like doing it and if people like it then we'll do yeah. more ben, ben's just i think just whispered it's going to be 10 years <laughs> uh 10 years of programming he's prepared to commit to six episodes a year yeah, yeah. Um, we'll see how it goes on on bbc2 on the 20 uh, when it's on yeah. 29th i guess it's you know in, until those things it's impossible to know but no, exactly. i think i mean i think you know, I think much people love the first one. Actually, there's, there's a lot more going on in this one. I think you've taken it to another level. Um, and I think that, you know, you can definitely see what the kind of trajectory could be if you wanted to. Yeah. Um, I mean, this one's much more like a movie, you know, at beginning, middle and the end, rather yeah. than the last one was proper old fashioned mockumentary. You know, yeah. based on documentary style footage. Mm. But officially, you're still following us around, aren't you? Yes, yes. But that would be, yeah, we do another thing a bit. It'd be like this, but we've got, we've got lots of ideas. And the thing is this, we've got no shortage of ideas because what's great about them, because they do music, because they're in music and they're in, uh, and, and in acting, and because they're and all the other side of their careers, there's a lot they can sort of take the mickey out of, and yeah. they're prepared to do that. If you were doing it with another person who was sort of limited in that way, it would be hard. But because th there's a whole world there in the, between the two of them, that uh, we can mine for comedy. And it sounds even though you were talking about the difficulty of getting something into 60 minutes, actually you had enough footage to keep it going longer and there was enough decent material, so to speak, to keep it going for like an hour and a quarter. We had like 15 minutes, of, well, that's all gonna go online, there's 15 minutes of very, actually very funny, it's not rubbish, it's actually quite good stuff that we had to cut out purely for yeah. time. So yeah, because we overshoot loads. So, 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 so how, will that um, that'd be on player, will it? I think that's, that's gonna be like on the BBC website, yeah. yeah. Love the guys from Number Nine, and your friends. Oh yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Reece Shearsmith, Reece Shearsmith and Steve Shearsmith. Pemberton. There's so a lot. Good. Yeah, there's a lot of people we like to work. I mean, we like to work with everyone, but it's um, 
that was done quite, we don't pay them much, <laughs> they don't get a lot of money. So they might go, oh, I'd rather do a uh, Netflix series. No, I I'm joking. sometimes it's um, better. I'm joking, of course. Um, yeah, well, Lenny, Lenny Rush is in this. <laughs> and I mean, since we filmed with Lenny in March, you know, yeah. he's become an absolute superstar. We couldn't afford him anymore. He, unfortunately, he's not here tonight because he's giving out an award. But, yes, that's right. Mm. But uh, little Lenny is just, um, uh, you know, I, I think once this comes out, I mean, that's the thing. We all the people we asked to be in this did it, which is very nice. And I think obviously you have a wish list, and then and then as, as the bigger it gets, the more people might take part in it. When you first did, when you did the very first in the twenty twenty one, had the Bross documentary come out at that point? How no. aware were you of that? No, it hadn't. We, no. We, this was all our first one was all written. I think before we then. filmed it. We yeah, filmed we it. it. We yeah. shot it before, before the Bross because everyone yeah. said, "Oh, you've just copied Bross." Yeah. And actually, you know, that I mean, I just it just gave me a memory of being in this very room back in the year in London Film Festival when we played the Bross movie and they were both here and, and there was a lot of laughter in the room. Oh, I don't know how much intentional laughter there was. <laughs> it was a bit like being in a kind of over 50s hen party. Mm, and, yeah. um, and, and, and in, in, in moments of quietness, and there weren't that many because it was very, you know, there were a lot of laughs. Every so often somebody would shout, I love you, Matt! <laughs> <laughs> anyway, there was none of that happening today. You know, behind the scenes moments, it's really difficult because even when you're making a comedy, where, where Gary and I are either, you know, on set doing the business here that you've seen, or we're reading and learning lines for the next bit. And so it's, it's all kind of like, it's all in a rush. So you, as much as we have fun with it, and, you know, we cry, honestly, laughter tears while we're working. Yeah, but, um, I did as well. <laughs> is, you do have to put in your, your head into kind of professional gear once in a while sometimes we can't work. finish a scene because yeah. it's yeah. a bit too funny yeah but there, were, there was there was one moment you know the moment when uh gary and i were in bed mm. and uh, <laughs> that was the hardest thing i've ever filmed in my life because as i get into bed my honestly tears were running down my face because all i could see was lauren hardy yeah you know in no, Morecambe, bed. Morecambe and Wise or yeah. Yeah. Ernie, it goes even, back you know. to Morecambe and Wise, it goes back to those old fashioned Christmas things that uh, we used to watch. I'm lying in the bed and, and Reese was no camera was there and Reese was directing and there was, there's a low beam he goes god we hit our head because it was actually reese's bed <laughs> and, and, Lucy, and he said we hit our head on that beam all the time yeah. and i thought like, oh, really and i got up and it bang yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, big bump but um when we first did the the show the very first show it was martin who came to me and said we should meet reese because he'd met him because martin had done brian pern yeah. and then reese just thought you know they probably want to do a fun little thing where we get a load of clips and we just interview them. And he then, after, we had a really great lunch together and he realized that we were really up for doing loads more. Yeah. No, also, what's so good about them, I tell you the truth, just genuinely, it could e we could easily have made a little clip show and, and done that, but we wanted to make it much bigger than that. And so rather than spend our money on ourselves and go, let's take all the money like some people do, we said, let's just make sure we spend it all on screen. That's mm. the truth. Because yeah, yeah. we want to make a better hour, you know? Yeah. Uh, and so we, that's what's so good about them. They don't think, oh, give me all the money. That's why he's on Cameo. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> 85 quid. But no, that's why we, then we threw everything into the programme. Do you know, we tried to get him as well for um, for this one. And I, he wanted to do it, but we uh, it just couldn't. It's time restraints. You know, oh. you, uh, when you make something like this inside a window of a week, um, you, the, you know, people are busy and Roman is a busy young man at the moment. But but I know he wanted to. He said he wanted to be here tonight, but he couldn't. He's busy for that. He's got a well. fat heart. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Francis wanted his ponytails back because there's a, <laughs> there's a reunion coming up. And well, my question was, was there, did you veto anything? We didn't veto. No, they didn't. Oh, no, they nothing. Didn't. No. no, absolutely nothing at all. Uh, I mean, you know, the, the fun about this is that Gary and I are open to everything. You know, um, I think if we'd have made this 20 years ago, we, there would have been a lot that we were vetoing because we took ourselves a little bit more seriously. But uh, towards the ends of our careers now- End, you know, beginning of the comedy and you, career. And you, and you can laugh at it, which is a wonderful thing to be able to do. And uh, does he listen to the Roman show? Well, I tell you, two days ago, I'm doing the school run and I get a phone call in my car and I answer it 
and it's him in Roman's studio, and they're all laughing at me about something. I don't know, I'm on the radio, and I didn't even know it was coming. Yeah. <laughs> We're talking about um, 29th of December. Yes. Uh, 10 o'clock on BBC Two. Yes. And uh, there's a chance to, to relive the magic all over again. It's, it gets better every time you watch it. There's more little details. Let's watch <laughs> yeah. it again now. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry. But, Great. But um, Thank congratulations. You.